into the caves again. And now, it was just me, alone in these cold, barren halls of ice. But Fred had been here, and now I could feel it. I was getting close. Something wasn't right. The grapple device's energy beam was somehow reflected off of the ice, and I couldn't get a grip. I had to look for areas where the ice was not so thick. This was going to be a challenge. When I drained the crystal, I suddenly felt the earth starting to move beneath my feet, and my mind wandered back to how the strays might have used the crystals as a source of power to keep their cities afloat. I decided it was best to hurry back the way I came before this whole room came apart. The crystals also reflected the grapple beam, but as they did, they seemed to recharge the grappling device. Those floating stones, what were they? I'm not sure. 
If only Maddie had come with me, maybe she could have translated the scripture on them. But Dad, didn't you learn some of their letters? Well, I had realized that each one of their letters represented one of ours. Maybe I could remember the writings that Maddie read to me in the chasms. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I landed hard and felt the impact vibrate through my body. The suit had protected me, but it was in bad shape. The rocket boots were worst off. The crash had ruined the functionality completely. I knew that if I stayed here to fix them, I would probably freeze to death. I had no other choice than to press on. How could Fred leave stuff behind everywhere? How much was he carrying? 
as I remember it, Fred wasn't that good at keeping track of all his things, like you. Hey, it's not like you're any better. Sorry. Anyway, Fred counted on losing a few things on each of his journeys. He always brought more stuff than he needed. For a paddling trip we had, he brought so many life jackets, we could barely fit ourselves in the canoes. Isn't it hard to lose track of a life jacket if you're wearing it? Uh, <laughs> good point. I guess he didn't really think of that. I found another one of Fred's campsite, noticeably newer than the others. The fire was still smoldering, and I could faintly pick up the smell of the aftershave he always used. I was closing in on him. I could feel it. He had left some tools behind that I could use to repair my boots. That should do it. Good as new. Buried beneath the ice, you could still see signs of what this place had once been. Something not unlike the caves where the village lay. The ice age must have come suddenly, washing over it like a freezing tsunami. Now it lay desolated, haunting anyone who dared visit with falling stalactites, sharp icicles, and its bottomless depths.
Fred had come this way alone, too. I took some comfort in knowing that whatever problems I face now, Fred would have faced them, too, and beaten them. If he could do it, I could do it, too.
It was dark all around me, but there was a light at the end of the tunnel. Hello? Nephew? Uncle Fred, I finally found him. My little boy, I'm glad to see you. And you're wearing the suit I made you. But how can you be here? I said that I found the suit in his workshop and that I came looking for him. I'm sorry for being away for so long. But I've been busy down here, you see. The frog people. That was an experiment of mine. Do you remember the eggs I found before? I sent them here by accident and I had to follow. By the time I got here, they were already growing. These caves were empty before, but my experiment has made them full of life. I've conducted research on them and documented everything about them. And I built a new crystal-powered pad to be able to get back to my colleagues, show them how fantastic this all is. I interrupted Fred and told him about Maddie, how we came all the way to Starhaven together, and that I had promised to ask him if he would go see her there. Madeline, my little Maddie. I, I should have taken her to see Starhaven long ago. She was always so curious about the strays. Well, I left her. I wanted to protect her. Or rather, protect myself from losing her. I've changed my mind. I'm not going home. What does research or praise matter when I can be here with these creatures? They need me. And it's just as well. I don't trust this pad for more than one ride anyway. You need that ride. I didn't want to go home. And I asked if I could stay with him and Maddie instead. I'm sorry, nephew. As much as I enjoy having you here, you must go home. Explore the world on your own. Have your own adventures. I reluctantly agreed to go home. I was going to miss my uncle. I will miss you too. But I'm sure you'll do phenomenal on your own. And don't worry about me or Maddie. We'll be fine. The pad is yours, boy. When you're ready. Sweetie. Wait, Dad. Does that mean Fred is still there? Who knows? That was the last time I saw him. Don't you miss him? I do, sometimes. But I don't worry about him. Because I know that wherever he is, he's on his biggest adventure yet. Dear Fred, Today, I step into the lobby of your house for the last time. My daughter asked me to tell her about an adventure, and I came to think of you. 
Your house looks just like my mother and I left it years ago. After you'd gone, I was sure she was going to throw out all your stuff, but she just cleaned up. We made you a small memorial. For a while, I came here every day, just like I used to. Sometimes, I could even faintly hear your voice calling from the observatory, asking me to get you this tool or that. I never told my mother about that day. I don't think she would have believed me. Can I believe it? After all these years, Uncle Fred, thanks to you, I have found an even greater adventure. Thank you. Love, your nephew.